So that means that there's still work to do. But the song says that the enemy tried to bring us down. He's doing his job. I wish we would do ours. Amen. Oh, Lord. Hi. We thank God this morning. We praise God for those in our sanctuary. We thank God for our soulless and musicians, media, ushers. We thank God for each and every one of you. And and those who are viewing us on the YouTube platform, we thank God for you as well. We thank God for the generous giving that's been given here at the New Union Church. And we praise God for how he continues to bless us in spite of ourselves. And then now we want to look at what the Apostle Paul has to say to the church at Galatia. This morning we're in Galatians chapter number three. Amen. We want to hear what the Lord has for us on this day. Amen as we uh, continue to do what God has called us to do. Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 28. The Bible reads, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are, one, ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Eternal God, the Father, we embrace your presence yet again. We thank you, Lord, God, that you might speak for your servant here. We pray, Father God, that our minds and our hearts may be open, Lord God, that we may gather wisdom, knowledge. But above all, Father, we continue to pray for your understanding. We thank you for who you are. Continue to lead us through this worship experience that you might be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Paul to the church at Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. This morning for a subject we're going to say one in Christ Jesus. The Bible is teaching you and I that we serve of God, a universal God. The Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. Not only that he created the heaven and earth, but he created everything that's in it. So today's lesson, we want to draw that there's no difference, there's no distinction between any of us. That's if you're in Christ Jesus. But during his first missionary journey to Asia Minor, Paul, he started the church at Galatia. He had received a report that the churches had fallen into hard times. Specifically, they had fallen in error according to their faith. A group of Judaizers sought to make an influence living under the Mosaic law. They were trying to make it a requirement of the Christian faith. But having a close relationship with these churches it enabled him to express an extreme, with an extremely strong tone as he wrote to correct the erroneous teaching that was plaguing the church. But see, Paul, he wanted to ensure that these new converts remained focused and not led astray through fear and deception. That was part of the Sunday school lesson this morning that we ought not be fearful of the things in which are around us. Uh, the, the, the writer, Isaiah, he said that the Lord had, was looking down on him. The Lord was upset with him. He said that he felt that the Lord has, was shunning him. But after he came to know who Jesus Christ is, he, he thought God was angry. It's all right to get angry, but... 
Paul said, be ye angry, but sin not. But what I'm trying to say is, is that irregardless of what's going on around us, we ought not get upset. God says that these things are going to happen. Paul told Timothy, he says, in the last days, perilous times are going to come. Men are going to become lovers of themselves instead of lovers of God. A lot of things that are going on, but Paul, he was writing to encourage these new believers to remain focused. See, Paul wanted to ensure that these new converts did not, was not led astray, that they were not being deceived about the things that are going on around them. Don't you know that we're living in a day and time where, where almost anything goes? But see, the problem is, is we're caught up in all the almost anything goes. See, the Bible says that these things were going to happen. And when I look at Pride Day and all this other foolishness that, that they are doing, the Bible says that these things are going to happen. But we need to stay focused on what the true word of God means to the believer. But the Bible says some scholars believe that the first real controversy that plagued the church in the early years was the relationship between the Christian Jews and the Gentiles. Paul's aggressiveness shows the importance of embracing unity in Christ, no matter of their racial distinctions. In other words, it ought not to be about the black and the white, the purple and the green, the blue and the orange, the Jew or the Greek. The Christian or the non-Christian, the Bible is teaching you and I that as we study the word of God, we ought to be focusing on what God says and all that other foolishness we ought to kick to the curb. See, this was a big issue. They were becoming deserters of Christ. They were turning from the truth toward a gospel of contrary to that in which Paul had taught. Paul had taught them one thing and then they started doing something else. In chapter 3, he began to attack their heart of the error the Galatian church sought to be justified by the Mosaic law. He starts off in verse number 1. He says, O foolish Galatians. He says, Who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been, has, has been evident, evidently set forth, crucified among you. What Paul is saying yesterday, you was glorying in the Lord. And today, just because you heard something different, now you want to change and go in the other direction. He says, this is only what I learn of you, Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. See, our faith is in a living God, a loving God. And see, the Bible is teaching you and I in doing this day and time that, that, that Peter says scoffers are out there. There are many folk that are coming that's teaching something other than the Word of God. But as I go to my seat this morning, we all have to believe in something. You ever seen that, 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 that movie, Car Wash? When, when Daddy Rich and, and them four sisters, the pointer sisters, pulled up into the car wash. He steps out. They steps out. They sang this song, you got to believe in something. Why not believe in me? But see, we ought not be believing in them. What to be in believing in the message in which I believe they were trying to point us, but they, the, the point of sister, that's, 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 that's who they were, but they, they were pointing us in the wrong direction. What I'm trying to say is that we ought to be believing in something, and it ought not be ourselves because we can't make one, we can't make one hair black or white as it pertains to ourselves. But see, as I go to my seat for the last time, see, they, they, they had heard something that was contrary to the word of God. The only thing that I saw in the movie Car Wash that was real, I saw it on a license plate. And it said tithe. 
Yeah, go back, go back and look at the movie. Go, go back and look at, at the movie. You know, I mean, if, if, if you gain nothing else, they're going to jump out this car. But before they jumped out the car, as it pulled up into the, in, into the car wash, all of us who have these personalized plates, they were back there in the 70s. Amen. We think it's something that just happened in the, in the 2000s. But what I'm trying to say, chapter 3, they began to, you know, it began to attack their heart with error. They were still trying to live by the Mosaic law. But later on in this chapter, chapter 3, he, Paul, Paul tells us that, that the law was a schoolmaster. It was given to us to let us know that we couldn't keep it. Don't you know on my best day, I still mess up. Uh, Brother Hal, he he been knowing me just for a short while. Trustee Gibson been knowing me for a little while. New Union been knowing me for a little while. Sister Sansa been knowing me for a long time. But what I'm trying to say is, is that there is always something that's going to try to get us off the beaten path. It might be a co-worker. It might be a supervisor. It might be a trustee, deacon, Sunday school teacher, usher. It might even be my wife. But what I'm trying to say is, is the Bible is teaching you and I that every now and then something is going to come our way to grasp our attention that it might not be on God, but it might be on something or somebody else. You got to believe in something. Don't believe in me, but believe in the one in whom I'm talking about. But see, Paul's argument is justification comes by faith in Jesus Christ and not by our works. Not by the works under the law. What I'm trying to say is, is that Paul says that the law was given to us to teach us that we could not obey God. I tell the young folks all the time, if you will listen and obey your parents, bless you. There's a good chance that you might listen and obey God. But these false teachers, they claim to live by grace. And, they, and, and, and what they were trying to say that it meant to live lawlessly. Don't you know you can't keep the law? On your best day, you cannot keep the law. See, Paul, he makes it clear that justification is an act of grace through faith that was given to believers as a means to live holy. That's all God is calling you and I to do, is to live holy. What does living holy mean? It means to live or try to live as the oracles of God, the word of God that has been given to us, to allow the spirit of God to lead God and to direct us. But see, Paul, he was teaching against, you know, falling into legalism. Don't you know we live in a legalistic society? You can't do this, and you can't do this, and you ought to be doing this, and you ought to be doing that. And, and But what I'm trying to say is that people are trying to get us to do stuff that we know, first of all, it's not right. And second of all, it is something that I do not desire to do. See, I don't like to do anything anybody tells me to do. I, I, I have problems with, with folk trying to please someone. I tell folk, if God is pleased with me, my wife, my children, or anyone else ought to be pleased. But oftentimes, we're looking at the individual Instead of listening and looking at the person that's in the individual. See, see, Paul says there is neither Jew nor 
Greek. See, Paul is trying to make a distinction that we live in a day and time when it's all about the haves and the have-nots. Have y'all ever seen that? Tyler's parents, I, I got tired of watching it because it, it seemed like, you know, you know there, was, there was too many gaps. There, there, was, there was things that was happening, but they weren't, you know, they weren't drawn to, to any kind of conclusion. But either you had or you was the have-nots. I used to love to watch it each and every week, but, but like I say, it, it got to a point to where there was too many loose ends. Do you have any loose ends in your life? That is a group that's called loose ends, amen? But what I'm trying to say is that Paul was trying to teach them that God desires that you and I to live holy. We look in the book of Leviticus, you know, the Bible teaches us, God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Peter, he echoed the same words in his letter. But see, the Christmas, the Christmas commitment to Christ is based on the free gift of grace through faith. Don't you know it's faith that leads us? At least it ought to be leading us. Believing and trusting, taking God at his word. See, Paul did not want them to fall into legalism because if we look at what's going on in the world today, there is so many people saying so many things that got folk going in so many different ways. And all God desires that you and I to make one distinction. He says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. See, that's the problem. See, God does not make us do anything. I heard this morning that, that, that God would allow you to be whatever you want to be. He'll turn you over, Sister Bethel told us this morning, to a reprobate mind. Whatever you want to become, God will allow it. Yes, he will. Even though he can make us do some things, the only thing that I can say that God would make us do, he will make, make us wish we had done some things. Yeah, he'll make you wish you had her. But he says, there is, you know, neither male nor female. See, the distinction that Paul is trying to make us know, come to know and understand is that there is no difference than none of any of us apart from Jesus Christ. If we're in Christ, we're the same. We might be at different levels of our understanding. We might be at different levels of our application, but there is no distinction between any of the believers, those who have put their faith in a living and a loving God. Uh, he says in verse number three, are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit and now made perfect by the flesh? See, coming to Jesus Christ, is that we're, we're, we're taking on the new man. The flesh has been around all of my life. And each and every day, I'm becoming to understand that the flesh is an opposite with what's going on with the spirit. The spirit desires to please and honor God, and the flesh desires to please and honor self. But the Bible is teaching you and I this morning that there is no distinction in that. And as churches are gathering today, uh, preaching from this, this passage, I believe the message is there is no distinction. There is no difference from any of us who have yielded our lives to Jesus Christ. See, a lot of us are still operating in carnality. See, Paul talked about the carnal Christian. He talked about the spiritual one. He talks about the one who, who, who still are dealing according with the flesh. See, God has called us out of darkness and placed us into his marvelous light. And, and we keep looking into what? To the, to the darkness areas of our lives 
instead of what God has lit up. But see, Paul wants you and I to come to know and understand that we ought not put no confidence in the flesh. Don't you know that flesh is what has gotten us to where we are? See, God has delivered us from our own selves, and we're trying to go back. Yeah, we are. What are you trying to go back to? See, God is in the business of delivering, and God has delivered us from the penalty and the power of sin. And one day that he's going to come back and to deliver us from the very presence. See, folk want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Folk want to please God, but they want to do it their own way. Don't you know that we can't please God doing our own thing? I know it's your thing. You can do what you want to do. But I can tell you this. At the end of the day, at the end of this life, if we don't do what God has called you and I to do, and that is to put our faith, our trust in Jesus Christ, it might be your thing today, but later on it's going to be the lake of fire's thing. Y yes, it is. But I, as I hasten to a close this morning, we have to come to the understanding that, that, that Paul desired that these folk might come to know and understand that, that, that there is no distinction. See, see, Jesus Christ, he died for the sins of the whole world. And the, and the, body is te the Bible is teaching you and I that there is what? There is separation in the body of Christ. And the reason that there is separation is that there are some big eyes and there are some little you. We say here at the New Union Church, until we all come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. There's no big eyes, you know. If, we, if we're going to be unified, we have to understand that Jesus Christ is the only one that can unify us. Because Paul told that church at Rome, he said, there's a war going on. He said, within my members, he, he says the flesh is, is warring against the spirit. And, and the reason why so many Christians are, are living defeated lives is that because they're following the flesh. We stay in situations and circumstances too long because we're operating in the flesh instead of operating under the unction of God's spirit. But as I hasten to a close this morning, he says that you are all one in Christ. Why do we treat us the way we treat each other? Have you ever heard that song, Why You Treat Me So Bad? I know I'm the only one that's heard it. I tell Sister Bethel all the time, I, 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 I know more of those songs than I know in the National Baptist hymnal. But what I'm trying to say is, is that we treat one another the way we treated folk before we came to know Christ. The Bible is teaching you and I that we ought to exercise faith, allowing the love of God to penetrate our minds and our hearts, that we might treat one another the way God treats us. If God treated us the way that we deserve to be treated, we in bad shape. We said on Wednesday night that if Jesus Christ did not get up from the grave, Paul told that church at Corinth that, that we're still what? We're still dead in our sins and we are men most miserable. But see, during this day and time, we're focusing on the wrong thing. See, we are focusing on the stuff that's going on around us instead of focusing on the one that can pull us through this. You ever heard Isaac Hayes? He said, life is just like quicksand. He said, the more you wiggle, the deeper you're going to sink. And somebody need to know and understand that to walk in the grace and the knowledge and the faith of Jesus Christ, he has pulled us through the quicksands of life. See, the more we wallow in foolishness, 
the more foolishness is going to take over. But Paul says there is no distinction between the Jew nor the Greek, the male, the female, whether you're bond or free. If you're in Jesus Christ, we all are one in him. I don't know what they're teaching today. See, it's not about all the good things of life. Because God, he has really blessed Sister Samson. God has really blessed me. And I'm looking at you all, and I can, you know, I can go out on a limb this morning. Uh, you, y'all, I don't, y'all ever heard that song, Out on a Limb? I know y'all probably never heard it. But I can go out on a limb this morning and say, God has indeed blessed you too. See, God has blessed each of us, but we don't understand God's blessings because we're watching what everybody else is doing. We see what's happening in this person's life, in that person's life, but we don't realize what God is doing in our own lives. See, the Bible wants you and I to know that, that God is working in our lives individually. He's working collectively, but at the end of the day, the Bible is desiring that you and I don't get caught up in the stuff that folk are saying on the streets. Have you ever been in the streets? I know. I know. It was in the streets that God has pulled each of us from. But see, the problem is, is that we want to go back to the streets. We ought to be treating one another with love and kindness. But don't you know, church, there are more bigots in the church than there is in, you know, in Hollywood. I'm trying to help me this morning. See, Paul wants you and I to know that the life in which you and I ought to be living is a life of faith. I can't trust in Sister Samson's money. I can't trust in what's going on on Pennsylvania Avenue. We know if we come out of the, the White House and hang a left and go up Pennsylvania Avenue, I, I know we can't trust what them folk doing up there at the Capitol. But I can go out on a limb today and say we can trust in Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul desires you and I to know as I take my seat. He wants you and I to know that we are one in Christ because we were bought. Don't you know there's some folk that have been bought? I ain't talking about with the precious blood of Jesus. I'm talking about there's some folk that you can pay off. There's some folk that you can swindle to do anything for a dollar, for freedom, or what have you. But see, bought is the simple past tense principle of buy. Don't you know you can buy just about anything that you want? But you can't buy salvation. Uh, yes, ma'am, it's a gift. We have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. That gives us the right to treat others the way in which we, ought to, we want to be treated ourselves. But it says bought, it means it's a means to have the right to acquire or purchase something. So you can buy anything that you want. See, I know folk have bought health insurance. They've bought life insurance. But don't you know health insurance? You can, you, you, it ain't going to stop you from getting sick. But we need to be careful because the insurance companies today, you don't, you don't pay for insurance a lifetime. When you start, when you, when, you, when you left home and got your own job and, you know, at 21, and you start buying your own insurance. Because our parents are, okay, you're on your own now. You got to take care of yourself. So we started out buying insurance, didn't really need it, 
<coughs> Excuse me. But now I need it. But see, but the insurance company, they don't want to give what you just do. You'll never be able to recoup the monies that you have placed into the hands of an insurance company. But don't you know, you know, you, you, you need it. You can't get it. But do we ought to not get caught up in insurance, but get caught up in assurance. See, I am assured that God is going to take care of me. But see, we've been bought with a price. See, Bob refers to acquiring an exchange of concession as an act or an instant of buying or an act of instant of buying or paying or promising to make a purchase. See, God has already made a purchase. Jesus Christ gave his life that you and I might have life, and we have the assurance that one day that we're going to be with him. But see, in theology, bought means to be redeemed or ransomed by payment or of a price to recover from the power of someone else. In other words, it's the blood of Jesus that's working in the lives of the believer which, which should cause us to love one another. There's too much dissension in the body of Christ. If there's dissension in the body of Christ and the world is looking at the church, it's no wonder we have all the chaos that's going on around us. But see, Christ freeing the elect from the dominion of the Mosaic law at the price of his vicarious death and the power of uh, his resurrection. In verse number 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curses of uh, the law. See, that's why a lot of people are cursed because they trying to do something that they can't do and all they need to do is continue to trust in God, put your faith in Jesus Christ, and the Bible tells you and I that God is going to get us to the other side. He says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everything that hangeth on a tree. See, there's some folk that are hanging on trees these days. And God has delivered us from that, but we still want to go back to where God has delivered us from. See, we all have uh, one in Christ because we received the promise of Jesus Christ coming to dwell within us. But as I hasten to a close this morning, we are one in Christ not only because he has what? He has, he has purchased us. He has bought us. But the Bible says we are one in Christ because we believe. What do you believe about God? See, some folk have a misunderstanding about who God is. See, God has made some promises. But see, the problem is, is that we step out on the promises in which we think that are what? True, real, and, and beneficial for us. What I'm trying to say is, is that we look for the good stuff. See, when we witness the people, we need, we need to give them the total package. But see, I know for some of us, the total package, we used to see him on WCW and Lex Luger. Yeah, they used to say that he was the total package, talking about a wrestler. But what I'm trying to say is the total package is Jesus. See, what I'm trying to say is, is that we ought to put our belief in someone who makes all the difference. But it says believe means to think to be true. See, some folk believe just because you got a rich bank account, you in good health, you think that you're what? You're walking. Right with God. <coughs> Excuse me. You think that you're something when you're not. See, believe it means to be persuaded. See, are you trying to persuade somebody to do something? I keep the, 
on my job. See, folk are always trying to persuade me to do something. Yeah, they do. Don't you know that your faith is always tested? And you got to stand firm in that in which you believe. See, 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 I'm trying to persuade us that we might walk in faith, not by sight, nor of the stuff that's going on around us, because it says believe means to put what? To put credit in something. See, in other words, we don't have to put credit in our faith, but we give God the credit for saving us. We place our confidence in Jesus Christ and what Paul desires for you and I to do and do on today. Don't look at your situation, but look at the one that can get you through your situation. See, that's the problem. That's what's going on in our world today is that we're seeking, searching, looking for the perfect beat. You probably never heard that song either. But what I'm trying to say is, is that we're looking all in the, the wrong places. I don't care how much money Deacon Bedford has. You know, you know, sometimes money can't help your case. Sometimes money, it really can't help your situation. Because the last time I checked, if I don't spend it before I leave, somebody else going to waste it. What I'm trying to say is, is that money has its property. Is, 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 is place in society, we put in too much trust in our ability, too much trust in the money in which you and I have made, but at the end of the day, don't you know it's going to be just like our works? Paul told that church at Corinth, he says our faith, not our faith, but our works are going to be tried by fire. He says some of that stuff is going to burn up, but the precious metals, the things in which you and I have placed in our lives concerning Jesus Christ, faith. Uh, you know, you're going to get a crown for your faith in Jesus Christ, your confidence in God, but believe is used in their conviction and trust to which a man is impelled by the, <coughs> excuse me, by certain inner and higher prerogatives and law of soul by trusting in Jesus Christ. In other words, you got to kick some stuff to the curb. You can't believe in your money. You can't believe in your education. Only thing that we can believe in is the word of God and apply those principles to our lives. See, believe is a mere acknowledgement of some fact or event. This morning we was talking about, you know, you know, you know, it's going to happen. If God said it, it's going to happen. It might not be today, but guess what? It's going to happen. See, see, the Bible is teaching you and I that when we acknowledge the fact of an event that's going to happen, it talks about intellectual faith. But knowing that God is able either in obtaining or doing something in a person's life, we come to know that as saving faith. See, you, you, it's not about who I think I am or what I think I know. It's about who I know and who I put my trust in. <coughs> Excuse me. Can't get through it this morning. Verse 22 says, but the scripture has concluded. See, we can't put our own perspective in it. You know, God knows what's best for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you ever heard uh, Fred Sanford when Rollo had the three degrees? They were giving him too much praise. They say he knows what's best. Well, I, I got news for the three degrees this morning. God is the only one that knows best for you and I. But see, it says, but the scripture has concluded all are under sin. See, all of us had something wrong with us. All of us were standing in need of someone that can bail us out of the situation that we were in. See, the problem is that God has bailed us out, and we don't want to go tell them how they can get out. 
We want to keep them in bondage. We want to keep them held down. And, and in our lesson today is that Paul, he had taught the Galatian church that, you know, by having faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that he has purchased you by the shedding of his blood, and all you have to do is believe somebody came along to put them back farther than which they had started. What I'm trying to say is, he says that, you know, it, he, he says, but the scripture has concluded all on the sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. In other words, you can't believe in what the point of sisters were talking about. You got to believe in Jesus Christ. You got to believe in the word of God. The Bible says, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And what I'm trying to say is, if you want to believe in something, believe in the Word of God, believe in the Spirit of God, and whom now resides in the believer, and you and I, we can lift, we can lift somebody up when they're down. See, it, it's not about what you have, it's about who you have. But he says here, that we need to come to an understand that we are one in Christ, not just because we was bought, not just because we believe. It says that we are one in Christ, Jesus, and we are indeed blessed. Don't you know that God told Abraham, he said that I'm going to make you a blessing. Don't you know he said that all the nations are going to be blessed because of you. Don't you know, but he talks about Abraham here, even in, in this lesson here. You know, Abraham is the father of our faith. And what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning is that it says that, you know, Jesus, when he, when he was talking about Abraham, he says, you know, he, Abraham is his friend because what? He stepped out on faith and did that in which God had called him to do. See, the problem is, is many of us have placed our faith in Jesus Christ they say it's faith and something else. See, that's the word on the street. Uh, I got news for you. I got news for me today. We are blessed. See, blessed refers to conferring to a benefit by kneeling oneself and adoring someone for their continued trust. Do you trust in God? Or do you trust in yourself? See, blessing means to praise. It means to salute. It means to consecrate, consecrate, sanctify by making or pronouncing someone to be holy. See, Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ has called you and I to be holy. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But see, blessing, it means to, is a request of God and bestowal of divine favor. Have you ever asked God for something that he didn't give it to you? See, 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 he gave it to you. See, the problem is, is that we think it should have came up a certain way. The Bible is teaching you and I that God, that, that the God in whom we serve, you know, you know, he, he, he's standing there. He, he says, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. If you open up, I come in and I sup with you and you with me and I with you. I'm trying to say this morning that we're all one in Christ Jesus. The Bible is telling you and I that we have received the divine favor of God. What I'm trying to say is, even in Sunday school this morning, you know, I, I heard someone say, well, if it wasn't for the Lord, I don't know where I'd be. I said, well, I got to look at it this way. The Bible is full of promises. If, if I know where the heathen is going to be, if I know where the saint is going to be, you know, I know exactly, you know, what's going on in the life of God's people. I just got to make my choice whether I'm going to go to the lake of fire or am I going to end up in the kingdom of heaven. But the Bible says here, as I take my seat this morning, he says in verse 8, he says, and the scripture." For seeing that God will justify the heathen through faith. Don't you know that I was a heathen? Yes, I was. You probably never heard that word a day in your life. You might not have heard it until you came to give your life to Christ. But when I was growing up, Sister Bethel, I used to hear the word heathen all the time. He ain't nothing but a heathen. Now, you, know, you know, I thought that was something good. 
because it came from somebody who who was good. My my grandmother, like, you know, he's a heathen. I I had to I had to see what a heathen was. But see, the Bible says that for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And thee shall all nations be blessed. We got to have exer- we got to exercise Abraham's faith this morning. But I love the blessing. It comes in verse number 29. It says, If ye be in crisis, then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. See, God has promised to keep you. He has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. See, that's the word that we need to be taking to the streets. Is that we serve a God who's sitting high. He's looking down low. He knows the thoughts and intents of our hearts. And just like Jesus Christ laid down his life for me as a heathen, he, he, he has laid down his life for whatever that person might be, whatever that person thinks they are. See, some people think that they are worthless. Like, you know, but don't you know that Jesus died for the worthless? But see, now, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are indeed somebody. And that's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning as I go to my seat, that we are blessed of God because we have given our lives to God and God is working out those things in our life that we want, that we might, it might spill out into the lives of somebody else. There's a song that says, nobody can do me like Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, see, that's a song that we ought to all have in our memory bank because, you know, yeah, I don't care what money can do. I don't care what people can do. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. And all Jesus is saying, all we have to do is believe. All we have to do is trust in him. See, it's easy to give somebody something, but we need to give them something that's going to sustain them, and that is indeed the word of God. That's what unites us. That's what ought to unite us. It's not the stuff that we do. It's not the possessions in which we have. Don't you know, when I was growing up, and and when I read in the book of James, I began to understand. James says our life is just like a vapor. It's here this moment, and it's gone the next moment. Down in Alabama, we can have a thunderstorm. It can rain for 30, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever. After the rain and after the sun comes out, That puddle that was there is gone. Life is just like that. And what God desires you and I, that as we continue on this road called life, that we might deposit something in the lives of someone that's going to be beneficial for them. And that's the word of God. We can feed them. We can do all those things. But if we're not sharing the word of God, something is wrong. But see, we live in a day and time to where you hear all kinds of stuff. All kinds of things are going on around us. But the Bible teaches you and I that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We want to take this time to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior. There might be someone who might want to give their life to Jesus Christ. There might be someone who might want to yield with the understanding that I've gone through, I've been through, and I don't know how I'm going to make it from day to day. The Bible does not want us to concentrate on situations and circumstances, but concentrate on someone that can make all the difference. I know back in the 70s, yeah, back in the 70s, concentrate on you. We concentrated on the wrong people, the wrong thing. What God desires, not L, what LD, LTD was talking about. LTD's concentrate. No, no, we need to concentrate on God because we have been bought. We believe. We receive God's blessing. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came not into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. The Bible says in John three eighteen, it says those who give their life, who have given their life, are not condemned. But those who refuse to do it, They condemned already. So they showed up in a condemned state. But the Bible teaches you and I, by having faith in God, it elevates us. We're no longer called servants, but friends. Are you a friend of God? 
Keep walking. Keep witnessing. Keep worshiping our Lord, Savior Jesus. The Bible is teaching you and I that there is no distinction between in any of us, those who are in Christ Jesus. So live your life to its fullest by allowing the Spirit of God to lead, guide, and direct us in all that we might say and do, knowing that we are in one. We are one in Christ Jesus. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Jesus, he 